one and all, Jasper here and holy shit, this Game of Thrones channel just made two videos back to back that were not about Game of Thrones. Well, I'll need to fix that right now and get back to the classic series that is failing me, Pokemon and Westeros. We've already tackled the North and Westerlands, so now let's go over my favorite region, the Riverlands, starting of course with the main family of the lands, House Tully. Now, Pokemon has a lot of fish that one could use, such as Basculegion, Belusa, and a few others. But for me, the perfect one was Wishy-Washy. I know, big surprise since the motherfucker was on the thumbnail. Some physical characteristics help it translate to the sigil, but it also has some nice themes. In its singular form, it is very weak. Damn near anyone can beat it in a fight. But when the full school is together, it's a powerful beast that you'll need to sacrifice an arm and a leg to beat. This can reference how the Tully's main words are family, duty, and honor, specifically family, and how together they can't be beaten. Or that the Riverlands can be a very powerful kingdom in their own right, should they properly unite. But often, when defeat becomes a strong possibility, many of the river lords will abandon one another, guaranteeing defeat just so maybe they can survive. It's about as deep as a kiddie pool, but I was proud of it. Next house is the phrase. Arguably one of, if not the, strongest family in the Riverlands. And with the sigil of a castle, we have two options. Palosand and Stakatakatakataka. Both having a strong visual resemblance to a castle. I mean, for fuck's sake, one of them is literally a sandcastle. Though, considering Stakatakatakataka can change and move the segments of his body, thus looking like damn near anything, I'm going to give it to him especially since he has the higher stats, befitting a powerful house such as the phrase. Now, House Malister is next on the chopping block, and they have a silver eagle on top of a dark purple background. And well, I have no shortage of flying Pokemon to pick from. Pidgeot, Fearow, Swellow, Talonflame, Staraptor are all decent options, but personally, I feel like Skarmory, a silver steel bird, would be perfect to have on the deep dark purple. Almost a one-to-one -one conversion. It's perfection. Alrighty, who's next on the list? Yeah, House Blackwood. And given how prominent the tree part of the sigil is, Trevenant fits quite well, especially the shiny version. It's practically a lower accurate weirwood tree with the color scheme it has. No options fit as well. And since House Blackwood also has some crows surrounding the tree in the original design, obviously we gotta change them as well, making them into murkrows. It's beautiful. This is probably my favorite sigil that Yggdrasil has made so far. Now, you can't talk about the Blackwoods without mentioning their eternal rivals, the Breckens, who have a deep red horse on a yellow field, and in my eyes, Rapidash, specifically the one that is on fire, is the clear choice for the family given the warm color scheme they have. Though my horse options are somewhat limited since I already used Mudsdale and Galarian Rapidash in previous videos. Now it's time for House Piper, who have a very, very not safe for work sigil. Well, with it being just a naked woman plastered onto it. <sighs> and of course, that means I gotta pick the sexiest Pokemon. As creepy as it is to say that. Now, many would say that Serena would be a great choice, since she has thighs that would crush your head. And who wouldn't want that? Others would say Salazzle, who gives off bad girl vibes. You go out with this monster and you will get arrested. And not just for trying to fuck an animal. Even more of you would go with Lopunny, cause you're all furry freaks. But really, there is only one option. Easily the most beautiful Pokemon, a wonderful figure, beautiful hair, and a face that translates perfectly to the woman on the sigil. And that is of course, Jinx. It's enough to bring me to tears and just how beautiful this is. Oh, also real fast, for some reason Yggdrasil wanted me to be clear on this. They did not make this sigil, and they never told me why they didn't want to. But I can only assume it's because they were terrified of trying to do justice to the natural beauty of Jinx, which is fair enough. That is a daunting task for any artist. Now we got another family with a tree on their sigil, House Riger, which has a weeping willow. Now, there are no weeping willow Pokemon that I'm aware of, and I'm starting to run out of tree Pokemon, surprisingly. But luckily, Executor fits the mold pretty damn well. Either version could work, but personally, I find the Alolan version just to clash a bit better with the original design. Now for one of the most prominent houses with easily the worst sigil in all the Riverlands, House Derry. 
but since I hate their sigil so much, I'm going to ignore them and instead have House Mooton get featured. Given the sigil of a delicious salmon on a white field with a yellow border, there were really only two options. The first one was Magikarp, whose color scheme translates amazingly well to the existing colors of the sigil. Though I try to avoid using legendary Pokemon, especially for such a minor house like Mooton. So instead, we're going to give them Sea King, who also translates incredibly well, and since most of you forget this Pokemon even exists, makes it an even better choice for the Mutants. Alright, the next family that caught my eye would be House Viprin. And I know what you're thinking. House Viprin. Obviously, their sigil would be a snake, right? I mean, this came from the creative mind of George R.R. R. Martin, who gave us House Black Bar, with the sigil of a black bar, and House Lips, that had a sigil of a pair of lips. But no, in this case, it's a frog on a lily pad. I have to say, I was caught by surprise on that one. Now, Pokemon have several frogs, but damn near all of them are blue oh, no. for some reason. Greninja, Polyrath, Venusaur, Toxicroak, all these fuckers are blue. However, there is one exception, Politoed, who has a green and yellow design, allowing him to be the easiest to translate onto the quiet green sigil. Keeping on the plant topic, let's go over to the house named after you all watching, House Smallwood, the original sigil being a bunch of small nuts dotting around. Easily the best sigil one could give with such an amazing name, and it's also really easy to change. C dot is perfect, no need to entertain any other ideas. House Went, by comparison, was a bit more difficult to take on. Like Smallwood, Went has the usual copy and paste design on their sigil, only this time it's a bunch of bats. There are a handful of bat Pokemon one could use, such as Zubat being the most obvious and probably popular pick, or even Woobat. But I am nothing if I simply go with the obvious choice. So instead of those two, I went with the final evolution of Zubat being Crobat. Why? Because he's the best bat Pokemon. Simple and obvious. Plus, I really, really fucking hate Zubat. They were always ambushing me in those fucking caves. No, they don't get a feature. Now last, but not quite least, is House Vance. Not going to lie, I almost skipped this sigil because, well, it's not that great of a sigil. Specifically the version of Wayfair's Rest. However, while gazing at it and going back and forth with Yggdrasil on some ideas, it just clicked. The Golden Rings can easily be replaced with Bronzor, and for the Black Dragon, well, there were not a shortage of options. Shiny Charizard, Garchomp, and Dragon Bolt were all strong contenders, but maybe it's because I had bats on the mind at the time, but I really like the idea of using Noivern to replace the dragon in this instance, and seeing how it came out, I don't regret it, even a little. Oh boy, I think that's enough for now. I'm not going to try and build a competitive team in this video, sadly. It's honestly more fun to just try and find the perfect Pokemon that fits the visuals of the sigil, rather than kind of trying to make sure I get decent Pokemon that can be competitive in a fight. But hey, maybe there is a house I didn't cover that you wish I did, or maybe you think there's a better Pokemon that I could have chosen. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Until then, stay safe, and I hope you all have a wonderful night.